Ladies, gentlemen, and serum of all ages, when it comes to the early game section of No Rest for the Wicked, the first couple of hours, mostly, this game can be absolutely brutal, at least as far as the challenge goes, and the learning curve can be a bit tough compared to the amount of resources that you are generally given to actually have early on, too, both in terms of sources of healing in any way, and also money, which leads to durability problems, as repairing your stuff has a cost, at least after you reach the town. It's worth mentioning, once you are a good few hours into the game, these actually become pretty much non-issues, actually, because you get better at the combat, and as you start building some actual gear as well, you will just die less, you will get hit less, which will cost less durability, but also on top of that, you will be taking on more difficult opponents, and your actual gold income, as a result, will start increasing exponentially. And because this game has ARPG roots in it too, you can actually buy pretty much anything that you actually need if you have the funds. So first things first, let's talk about how to actually unlock the ability to do so. The blacksmith you will find through the process of opening the gate to the keep on your way to Sacrament to begin with, and you can repair here, but even if you actually skip him by jumping off the castle first, he will still make his way to Sacrament regardless after you sleep there for a night, so he comes either way. After your first rest then, the world will move forward a bit, and one of the side quests available will be to rescue the innkeeper, whose wife has asked you for help. You can find the innkeeper on the bridge right above the Serum Whisper that is all the way on the western side of the Shallows area over here. He needs help getting out, so pick up the key beside him, then go to the Whisper just northeast of this and climb up the ladder, cross the wooden bridge, and the door right here is what that key opens. Progress through this area a little bit and you'll find this contraption, hold the interact button and push or pull to open this gate, then hang a left through here and follow the path to kick down a ladder to the innkeeper, who will then set up in Sacrament, where he sells all sorts of ingredients in unlimited stock, including the herbs, which are the main bottleneck of being able to make food early on in the game. This is also important because once you have saved him, you can upgrade his shop multiple times, and this will let you actually get the ability to craft advanced meals with more potent effects, and so the whole thing just sort of cycles onwards to give you stronger effects, which makes you die less, which makes you take less damage, so you take less durability loss, so on and so forth. But again, as you get further into the game, money itself will become a non-issue too. Equipment sells for quite a lot of money, and you can sell anything that you don't intend on using in the near future, because if you're not going to use it soon, then you will replace it with better stuff sooner rather than later. It's important to mention that you should be doing that, especially a lot in the early game, because especially with common gear or any blue or purple gear that just has rolled horribly, those are all worth quite a fair bit of coin relative to what you have in the early game if you actually want to sell them off, and you don't really have any advantage to just hoarding them in the community chest if you're not ever going to actually use it. And remember, you are early game, so the stuff that you get now just won't matter if you're not going to use it right away, and that should help you afford more cooking supplies and also more repairs to help with your durability problems. On a similar note, there is the bounty and challenge system that you can access at this NPC in Sacrament right here, the bounties that you have to accept and then complete, and then you get the reward at the end of which what can be quite meaty. Especially for the actually money rewards, and you can get these as both daily and weekly bounties, which are quite hefty. And the challenges are just passive things that you can complete without even realizing, really, or things that you can make a goal if you actually choose to once you've seen them here, if you want to aim for one. And these are just bonus rewards for doing that type of thing. So interacting with these and then also selling your gear is generally the best way that I've found so far of getting your gold supply going up as quickly as possible, because that really just makes the rest of the game so much easier and so much more comfortable, honestly. Then past that, there are also other ways to mess with these systems and make them a little bit less punishing. For example, some runes that are sold by the enchantment vendor over here in Sacrament. You can buy runes from her, of course, and then she can put them into your weapons with one of her other functions. Then you can use the rune skills for a focus cost. She sells, even at level 1, a number of quite potent runes that you can insert into various weapons, such as Pulse of Health, which restores a small amount of health every time that you use it. It isn't a whole lot of health, but it does give you a non-resource limited healing source, which scales with skill as well, as if you parry and dodge attacks, that fills the focus meter, which means parrying gives you health. So as you learn to get better at something like that, this will get even more useful for you. Also, there is repair as a function that you can get from this too and put into a rune skill, which you can get here, and this literally will just repair durability in exchange for focus, which again is extremely solid. This will save you a ton of gold, but it does cost 150 focus to cast to begin with, so you do need at least three skill points in focus to actually be able to use this in the first place. You can also create an item called Repair Powder once you get the Alchemist Vendor to level 2 in the town as well. So between all those things and then also just the fact that gold solves all of these problems in itself, the more you play this game, the less of a problem both durability and healing supply will actually become. It makes early game a bit of a slog to get into it, really, it, like actually a pretty big slog, but hopefully they will see the feedback that the community has been leaving everywhere about their feelings about this and readjust some of those early game numbers on these systems before the proper launch for the game. 
That said, I do think there is some charm to it in less frustrating moments, of course. For example, while exploring, I had my weapon break as I was mid-fight, so my guy just whips his weapon aside, takes out his fists, and starts punching. I get a backstab, but because he's got his fist out, he just starts German suplexing the guy over his head, knocking him down on his noggin, and I, I do it again, and he just sort of explodes. And it's this sort of visceral feeling of, like, just realizing my character just broke his weapon by hitting an enemy too hard with it, threw it aside, and just beat the crap out of him with his bare hand because that's what he had to do. It's really cool, honestly. So as long as they make the actual cost of durability lower in the early stages and make food just a touch more accessible than two, these moments will be a lot more charming and a lot less, you know, infuriating when they happen too often. I think the concepts in place are really fun. They just need a little bit of adjustments at the very least. That just about does it for today than everyone. Honestly, a combination of a sort of just spreading the information that these systems people are having understandable issues with get much better a few hours in, and also a number of ways to fix and manage manage these systems sooner rather than later to let you sort of just enjoy the rest of the game around it a bit more as you go. I hope you've enjoyed this then and hopefully you found out something new to help you out in your journey. I really do think that this game has a solid core in it, a really fun gameplay base, so I think the sooner that the rougher edges are smoothed out, the better it will be. But hey, that's what Early Access is for, right? And this is one of the few games that I've seen that actually has done Early Access for the purpose that it was made for. So right now what we can do is just make it as easy as possible for the meantime, which is what this video is about. Like if you liked the video then, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.